All right, hey everybody, welcome. My name is Michael. I'm gonna be walking you through how to configure your Citrix Netscaler for use with Secure Envoy's multi-factor authentication. Quite simple, let's dig in. Uh, a couple things we need to know about our Citrix uh, Netscaler environment. Uh, we need to know if it's a standalone or a high availability pair. And we need to know our management IP as well as our subnet IP, and let me explain why. When the Netscaler is in a standalone configuration, which mine is, as you can see here, this is on the system, basic system information tab. When I look here and I see node standalone, what that means is that all traffic related to DNS and authentication are gonna go out over the management interface. If I have a high availability pair, then all of that authentication traffic goes out over the subnet IP address. Let me show you where you can find that information. Up here in the upper right hand corner, you see the small little gear for settings. If you click that, you're gonna see your management IP address, in my case, 192.168.200.100, and my subnet IP is 200.101. I can also see the name of my Netscaler, what DNS servers I'm using, so forth and so on. These are the two most important pieces. In my environment, I have a single Netscaler. All of the communication will go out over 200.100. All right, now that that's done, let's go over to our Secure Envoy server and let's get configured properly so we're ready to receive. Over here on the left-hand side under Radius, I'm gonna just simply create a Radius client. This is what we are expecting, where we are expecting to receive uh, authentication, Radius authentication traffic from. 200.100, and I'm gonna click Add. Down here in the bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a friendly name, something I can remember. So Citrix Netscaler, descriptive. And I have to give it a shared secret because I'm allowing radius traffic to come in from 200.100 and I authorize that communication with a shared secret. In a production environment, your shared secret should be complicated. Um, it's not gonna change very often, if ever. So you wanna make sure that it's long, complicated, difficult, use uppers and lowers and special characters and numbers and things. In our environment for the lab and this demonstration, we just won't do that. So we're gonna use the shared secret called shared secret. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and use two-step passcode in a separate dialog box. This is required for push notifications and other features of our product to work. We're gonna be using the default domain, which is the only one we are currently configured for in our secure Envoy environment which is secureenvoylab.co.uk. And we're gonna click update. Now, now that that's updated, it's also important to make a note that if you have more than one Secure Envoy server, uh, lots of the configuration settings that we have do synchronize by way of the centralized Active Directory database. Radius is, the one, is one of them that does not. Anytime that you see a radius configuration on one secure Envoy server, it may not exist on the other. The reason for that is because you could have more than one secure Envoy server, but they could be in different data centers. And those different data centers may have different radius requirements. So we deliberately don't synchronize these in order for the administrator of the environment to have control over what traffic is going where and who's accepting it. So now this Secure Envoy server is prepared to receive radius communication from the Citrix Netscaler from 200 using the shared secret of shared secret. So now let's head over to the Netscaler and begin our configuration here. Uh, assuming you have a fully compliant up and running Citrix Netscaler, which you would obviously know, you can click on the Zen apps and desktop, you'll see the, the dashboard, you can see citrix.secureenvoylab.co.uk, you got an STA storefront environment, everything's up and running, it works great. Uh, we're gonna go ahead into the Citrix gateway here. We're gonna go down to policies. We need to create a radius policy and tell the Netscaler where to send stuff. So we're gonna go down here to authentication. Please make a note, it's not alphabetical, although I've argued for years that it should be. Go down to authentication and then into radius. In here, we are gonna create a radius policy and we're gonna associate a radius server configuration with that policy. So let's click on add. We're gonna give this policy a name. Secure Envoy Radius. Oop, I spelled that wrong. Radius. And we don't have a server to choose from yet, so let's add one. 
Now, the server name, of course, is going to be se-01 uh, because that's what my name of my server is. Um, and this is really just descriptive. It doesn't, um, it, it's not going to go out and reach for this. We're going to go out by IP address. If I was going to go out by server name, I would put the fully qualified name of the server here. Since I'm going to use the IP address, I'm going to do it this way. 192.168.200.55. That is my secure Envoy server. And my shared secret is going to be shared secret. And let's confirm that. Shared secret. Let's take a look. Yep, perfect. Now I'm going to set up my timeout to 20 seconds, and I'm going to click more and scroll to the bottom to confirm that password encoding is set up to PAP. Now, if I've done all my things correctly, when I hit test radius reachability, I should get a nice green display that shows me that radius is reachable, that 1812 UDP is open, all the good stuff I need to see. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and create. <clears throat> now, the only other thing I need to do here is just simply pull down the center and click NS true and hit create. The message here is Citrix advising you that these legacy policies are being depreciated. Click OK to that. Now, the next thing I want to do is make sure that I save my configuration changes. Because that was a lot of work and I don't want to have to do it again. You can see I've got a secure Envoy Radius policy set with a request server of SEO1. And if I switch over to the Servers tab, of course, it refreshes. And then I can see SEO1 on 255 using port 1812, 20-second timeout. Good so far? All right. On the virtual server up here near the top, we have to edit this virtual server and flip out the LDAP authentication policy with our RADIUS policy. So this would you would be familiar with this already because you're probably administering this environment. But down here under basic authentication, the only thing we have to do is remove the LDAP policy and replace it with RADIUS. So we're going to click on Add. And we are going to select our radius policy. Keep it as primary. Remember, that's an important part because otherwise push notifications won't work. So we have to hit continue. Now we're going to select a policy here. And this is the policy we just got done making, so it's easy for us to identify. It's the secure Envoy radius policy. Expression is true. It's on. Secure Envoy 01, la la. Okay. So we're going to select that one. Priority is going to be 100, and we're going to click on bind. Now, for the LDAP policy, we have to actually remove that policy and get it out of the way. So we're going to highlight it. We're going to click on the checkbox, click Unbind, and close. So now this configuration has been sort of reconfigured to remove the LDAP policy and replace it with the RADIUS policy. So we will back up a step, save any changes to our configuration. All right, perfect. Now we're going to head over to the Secure Envoy server for a moment. We're going to go into Users. We're going to search and we're going to find our test user. Our test user has been configured with a uh, static uh, with a static passcode. Now it's irrelevant because however the user decides to configure their authentication, if they're using a one-time code or they're using a soft token or a hardware token or push notifications, all, they'll all work and they will work from one user to another. So every time the Citrix Netscaler reaches over to Secure Envoy for the second factor, it looks this part up and it sends out the appropriate type of multi-factor that the user has already decided they want. So that's why this is important. So now let's head over to our Citrix gateway and let's get ready to log in. So we're gonna use our test account. Test user at secureenvoylab.co.uk. And let's put in our password. We're going to click on our little EULA. And we're going to click on Login. Now, it's asking me for a six-digit passcode because that's what I chose for the demonstration. And if I hit Submit, it's going to fire me right through. So here's all my apps. Here's my virtual desktop. All my good stuff. That is the five-minute tutorial on how to configure your Citrix Netscaler for use with Secure Envoy's multi-factor authentication.